Hey good people, welcome back to Beauty in the Frizz. My name is Kara. Whether you're new or returning, thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me for what I feel is a really exciting video. Nomad Cosmetics, one of my priority brands, they have come out with their latest palette. I wanna tell you all about it. I wanna swatch it. I wanna do looks. I wanna tell you about the shade names. I wanna go to New Zealand, y'all. That's where I'm trying to go now. If that all sounds good to you, keep watching this video. Let me know what you think and if makeup is your therapy and your love. If it makes you happy and you wanna hang out with someone that feels the same way, definitely consider joining the community. I'd love to have you back. All right, let's get started. So how are you? I am very ecstatic, y'all. I am really happy, y'all, because yesterday, which was January 9th, we had a two hour early dismissal because of some wind, rain that was coming, so they let us know that on the 8th. Then last night they said school's gonna be two hours late. I'm like, okay, great. So I'm just like looking up some information about the shade names, having a nice little time. I get a call that school's closed. Closed! And I love my kids, but August school was open on time. Marky had a dentist appointment that granddad was helping me out with. I'm here alone by myself with a new eyeshadow palette. So I'm really excited y'all to do this and uh, let's get into it. Before we get started with all the vocabulary and the background of the palette, I got to shout out one of my friends here on YouTube. Her name is Maria and her YouTube channel is Night Star Beauty. And I met her early on in my YouTube journey. She is from New Zealand. So she would always, uh, you know, just give me little tidbits of information. And I was just like, wow, this is a great place. I need to go here at some point. And she would always let us know what time it was when she would be on the premieres because the time is completely different there. So Maria, I just want to shout you out. I hope that you see this palette and that you like it and that you feel like it's a representative of New Zealand because y'all, this is a beautiful one. Uh, Maria does more like luxury beauty. So if you're into the luxury brands like Chanel, Dior, all those types of brands, she does more with those types of brands, but this might make her try some indie y'all. It might. Okay. So Nomad started, you know, the whole guessing game situation. I'm terrible at it. So I was just happy when my package arrived because the guessing drives me crazy. Like I have no idea. I knew the palette was going to be galactic. I knew it was going to be just <laughs> because Nomad, they really stepped it up. When I saw those shimmers, I'm like, Ooh, right away. I thought, those are like those Royal Europe multi-chromes. Okay, I'm here for this, whatever it is, here for it. So without further ado, y'all, let's get into the review. This is the Nomad Cosmetics New Zealand Star Gazing Palette. Deep and dazzling shades formulated with extra fine pigments for rich color payoff and heavenly feel. Infused with Manuka oil for smooth and crease proof wear. Nine stellar mattes and six twinkling multi-chromes inspired by the out of this world stargazing in New Zealand. So our destination is the Dark Sky Nation. The coordinates are the Southern Cross, which we'll talk about it. And the inspiration are the cosmos. Full of otherworldly landscapes and surrounded by intensely dark skies, New Zealand stargazing is a breathtaking, transcendent, and humbling experience. As night descends, the cosmos come to life, displaying millions of shimmering stars so vivid you want to reach out and touch them. From the radiant southern lights to the spiraling Milky Way, this island country is the perfect place to feel a part of the greater universe and realize we are all made of star stuff. This palette has a 12 month shelf life, is cruelty free and vegan, and it was designed on location, gazing up at the night skies in New Zealand. And Nomad Cosmetics is a proud supporter of International Dark Sky Association. I'll talk a little bit about that as well. As per usual, Nomad always sends a card with their palettes, talking a bit about the destination. They describe the color story as a color story of depth and lightness with deep space shades of blue, black, and purple surrounding illuminating celestial hues and colorful Southern lights. One thing I love about Nomad Cosmetics is that some of the proceeds of their palette sales go to a cause 
sauce that is native to the destination. So in this case, they are supporting Dark Sky International and they work to restore the nighttime environment and protect habitats from light pollution. And we're gonna talk all about that in a second. So I showed you the palette already and now we getting into the vocabulary part. I was about to say the vocabulary part of the lesson, the vocabulary part of the review because I'm just the type of person that if I see a whole bunch of words I don't know, I'm gonna look it up if I have time. And I got time today, y'all. I have, so I have my notes. And after this, you are gonna wanna go to New Zealand. You are going to want to go to a dark sky reserve so that you can see the millions and millions of stars. I'm really excited. I'm gonna slide over a bit because I'm probably gonna be popping up some pictures. I also have to say that when I opened this palette last night, I was totally stunned with this color story. I, I was taken aback. You wonder sometimes how a brand can top something that you may have loved. Ghost Town, Haunted Europe, Royal Europe. I'm like, what, what can they do better? So I was definitely itching to see this and this color story does not disappoint. The one thing that I really love about the layout of this, so if you think back to Royal Europe, they had this gradient of mattes and then all of the multi-chromes were on the bottom row. Well, this time they have the multi-chromes kind of speckled throughout. So there's one on the top row, there's two on the middle and then three on the bottom row and it makes this little design. So it's almost like an upside down V and then you have that one here. So I, I really like how they did the layout like that. I thought that was really creative and different. When we talk about dark sky reserves and, and dark sky parks, as of January, 2023, there are over 201 certified dark sky places globally, 38 communities, 115 parks, 20 reserves, 16 sanctuaries, and six developments of distinction and, ur and six urban night sky places. So I'm thinking that there's different criterias to be designated as one of these types of uh, dark sky places. Now the biggest international dark sky reserve is over 9 million acres and it is located in Texas, Fort Davis, Texas, and it actually crosses into Mexico, which makes it the first binational international dark sky reserve. I'm putting websites, reviews, TripAdvisor, it's all in the description box, y'all. I'm not gonna put it in there. It's already in there. In case you're interested in reading more because I really went down the the dark sky rabbit hole. And you also heard that Nomad is supporting Dark Sky International. So their website will be in there too. And basically what they do is they restore the nighttime environment and protect communities from harmful effects of light pollution through outreach, advocacy, and conservation. I guess we're not doing the swatches yet. We're gonna do them in a second. So when you think about light pollution and just how many stars are out there that we can't see, because of light pollution, even in a dark sky. You know, it's kind of mind blowing to think about that. And when I looked at some YouTube videos of what the night sky looks like in these dark sky reserves, it's phenomenal. It's something that I have to see in my lifetime, if, if possible. I would love to make it there. Still wanna see the Northern Lights. I know I talked about going in 2024 in my Nomad Iceland video, and I don't know if I'm gonna get there this year, but it, it really isn't about the year, it's about getting there. So that's still on my list. Now, you might wonder what are the effects of light pollution? So light pollution can disrupt wildlife, it impacts human health, and it wastes money and energy. It also contributes to climate change, which I didn't really think about that. And it blocks our view of the universe. I mean, who doesn't wanna see the universe? Now we're gonna get into the swatches. This is gonna be long, so get, get a drink, get a snack. Now, Nomad always has these really cool embossing, so we're gonna start here with Dark Sky Nation, 
And a dark place is a land possessing an exceptional or distinguished quality of starry nights in the nocturnal environment that is specifically protected for its scientific, natural, educational, cultural, heritage, and or public enjoyment. So that's why on the card, or I think it's actually on the back of the palette, it says Dark Sky Nation. And actually in November, 2022, New Zealand, aimed to achieve something that was almost impossible and they wanted to become only the second dark sky nation in the world. Now, I don't know because I didn't see like, did they achieve that yet or how long it takes? The reason that this is very hard to achieve is because light pollution affects 80% of the world. To be in a small percentage where light pollution is not affecting the sky that's going to be something that's a huge a huge feat and like they said almost impossible so they did put in efforts to reduce light pollution and preserve the pristine view of the night sky and that's according to national geographic and right now there's only one dark sky nation in the world which is a island country new n-i-u-e hold on i meant to get this pronunciation new a Niue, I was close. Niue is an island country in the South Pacific Ocean and they were certified in 2020. So I'm not sure. I looked up was New Zealand a dark sky nation, but I couldn't find it. So if you know, let me know. No man, you let me know. Cause I don't know. The embossing uh, on there that you saw was a cross. And that's also one of the shade names, the Southern Cross. So we will talk about that. So this is a beautiful matte black. Look at the swatch. What are we doing? I don't know. Shade number two is Carter Observatory. This is called Space Place at Carter Observatory. So I have that website in there. And basically it's like a huge planetarium. So they share stories of the New Zealand sky through exhibits, galleries. There's a telescope. Again, there's a full dome of planetarium. So you can learn about the planets, the constellation, the stars and what New Zealand has contributed to astronomy and the space sciences. And next we have Carina Nebula, and there is an embossing of the island of New Zealand. The Carina Nebula is a large complex area of bright and dark nebulosity in the constellation Carina, which is located in the Carina Sagittarius arm of the Milky Way galaxy. And it is approximately 8,500 light years away from Earth. Next we have Auckland Star dome the star dome is a 360 degree indoor dome planetarium with comfortable reclined seats it was making me wonder because you know las vegas has that dome building and there's not a lot of those in the world i think it's the second largest but i think the first largest is in australia I don't think it's this one. Experience wonder with hyper-realistic, fully immersive presenter-led shows. Join our astronomy on a tour of the celestial sites above Auckland in our night sky stardom's immersive 360 degree digital planetarium. And it shows you the exact stars in the sky on the day of your visit. There's also a telescope experience you can enjoy there for groups up to 15 people. So this sounds like something you would have to visit. Finally, on the top row, we have Araki. Mackenzie. The Air Rocky Mackenzie is an international dark sky reserve and they again are protecting the skies against light pollution now and in perpetuity and the reserve is recognized locally and internationally as a center for astro tourism and public education so this is another dark sky reserve I was about to say just another no because I, I feel like it's really hard like how do they prevent light pollution? That's, I don't know, I'm gonna have to look that up. So this is our first row. We'll see how far down my arm I can get. Next we have Takapo Stargazing. I'm going, letting y'all know right now. It is the ultimate in stellar relaxation. It is the only guided hot pools and stargazing experience in New Zealand. The tour operates from the Takapo Springs, combining the stunning Araki McKenzie, which we just talked about, that reserve with the soul warming hot pool. And the first half of this indoor and outdoor tour introduces you to Takapo's amazing night skies with a unique combination of astronomy and storytelling. And then you 
will enjoy exclusive use of the hot pool lounge floating hammock and feel like you're soaking in the stars as you explore the wonder of the night skies. The temperature varies between 37.5 and 38.5 degrees. The temperature of what? Well, I guess that's what it is outside and then you're in the hot springs. I will fly to the cold to, for this. I will fly to Iceland. Anywhere else, I, I we gotta check. I don't know. <laughs> Next we have the Milky Way, which is the galaxy that includes the solar system. And the name describes the galaxy's appearance from Earth. So we see that hazy band of light seen in the night sky. And the term Milky Way is a translation of the Latin Via Lactea which means milky circle. And from Earth, it appears as a band because the disc shaped structure is viewed from within. Oh, right, because we're in the Milky Way. So it's like the part of what we see. That's what we see that band. And I saw some pictures showing that. I don't know. I, I want to see it in real life because I'm just amazed looking from the computer. Y'all get to see my little nerdy teacher side because I swear I've been looking this stuff up for hours and I've had a great time doing this on my day off because when else like some of my nomad palettes, most of them, I don't get a chance to do this type of research and I want to, but most times I don't get the opportunity. But look at that. Beautiful. And if you want, what I'll do, I need to write this down. Maybe at the end, I'll swatch these compared to the ones from the Royal Europe palette and we can see if any of them are similar. Next, we have the Cosmos and you can see the Nomad Cosmetics logo here. Cosmos is an alternate name for like the universe and it's nature and order. And it says use of the word cosmos implies viewing the universe as a complex and orderly system or entity. It comes from the study of cosmology. Next we have jewel box. So the jewel box is an open cluster in the constellation Crooks. Crooks, C-R-U-X, Crooks. This cluster was later named the jewel box by John Herschel when he described its telescopic experience as a superb piece of fancy jewelry. So now it's known as jewel box. I think I'm gonna get a lot of use out of this shade. It's Southern Lights. So opposite of the Northern Lights, the Southern Lights is the Aurora Australis. So it is the auroras that are surrounding the Southern South Pole. We're not surround, surrounding the South Pole, but near the South Pole. Cause you know, the auroras are by the poles. So this is the South Pole. All right, next we have the Southern Cross. So the Southern Cross, the Southern Cross is a pattern of stars that you can see in the Milky Way galaxy, but I think you can only see it in the Southern Hemisphere. So one of the things that I was noticing was that on the New Zealand flag, there are four stars and those stars represent the Southern Cross, but there's really five stars. So Australia also has the Southern Cross on their flag and they have all five stars. I'm not sure why New Zealand has four stars and Australia has five stars, but that's just what it is. I don't know why. So the Southern Cross was recognized by European explorers uh, because of that pattern. So there's four stars that form the outline and then there's another faint star that goes across the crossbar. Maybe the faint star is the one that New Zealand doesn't have. I really don't know. But the Southern Cross is a national symbol. So there are companies that use the term Southern Cross, uh, ships, planes, and also newspapers. So the Southern Cross is very um, significant, I would say, to New Zealand. Number 12 is Tongariro Night Hike. This national park is often described as New Zealand's greatest day walk. The Tongariro Alpine Crossing is a challenging journey across a remarkable volcanic landscape. I did see that there are some guided tours that you can do, and some of them are at night. So I can imagine that that night hike and seeing like the stars would be so beautiful. So that's number 12. 13 is another multi-chrome. It's Aurora Australis. This is another word for Southern lights. Next we have Queenstown Skyline. Take a ride in Queenstown's iconic gondola and immerse yourself in spectacular panoramic views of Queenstown and the surrounding mountains. But there's more. When you get to the top, 
Get your fix of downhill fun with the Skyline Luge. Settle in for a relaxing evening with the best of New Zealand and international cuisine at Stratosphere Restaurant and Bar or journey into the hidden world of the night sky with Skyline's guided stargazing experience. Ooh. Okay, <laughs> and last but certainly not least is Magellanic Clouds. And these are two irregular dwarf galaxies. So when you see them in the sky, it looks like clouds, like little fuzzy clouds. So there's a large one and then there is a small one. The Magellanic clouds, you can see them unaided in the Southern hemisphere. So you don't need any telescopes or anything like that to see them in the sky. And they're actually now reclassified as Magellanic spiral galaxies. And unfortunately from the Northern latitudes, we're not gonna be able to see the Magellanic clouds. And that's just sad. That means we just have to go. You know what I'm saying? We just have to go. Let's take a look at this beauty up close y'all. I know I couldn't swatch everything in exact order, but I think you'll get the point. When I do this type of research about an eyeshadow palette, cause it's something that seems so simple. The last palette I did this with was Xenon. It makes me have so much more of a love for the palette itself, but the brand, the vision, the design, the time, this is not something that I feel like was thrown together. I feel like it was really created at the destination and I'm just always so amazed with Nomad, how they're able to have these, uh, what would you, uh, memoirs or symbols, a symbol of the destinations where they've been. I think that's just such, I don't know, a great legacy to your own memories, if that makes sense. Okay, I'm gonna grab Haunted Europe while I'm in the swatch mode, and then we're just gonna compare the two. I'm gonna edit this video to make it as short as possible, but I know it's gonna be a long one. So let me grab Haunted Europe, Royal Europe, and I'll be right back. So we're back, and here is Royal Europe. So we have Imperial Crown, and I'll zoom in, Royal Orb, Blue de France, St. Edward's Crown, and then Royal Treasure. And of course, you know, these can definitely be built up. And there's only five where there's six in the New Zealand palette. Right away, I feel like these are a little bit different though. Let's see, so we got Carina Nebula. So almost like this one here. I would say they're really close. I feel like these pick up a lot easier, the ones in the, the new palette. This one is Milky Way. So close, maybe combination of these two. Now Jewel Box. Yeah, Jewel Box is different. Southern Cross. Oh yeah, Southern Cross is a bit different. And I think these last two are completely different. Aurora Australis Magellanic Clouds. These are different. I would definitely say, I mean, with the multi-chromes and the mattes that are in the New Zealand palette, um, you wouldn't be hurting by having this one in your collection. If you have the Royal Europe one, it's, you're not really like doing a whole bunch of dupes or anything like that. I think the quality, I don't know, it might just be me. Cause I'm in my excitement feeling right now, but I feel like these are better. They're, they're like one swatch. Whereas these are really sparkly, but a little more subtle. They remind me of the ones in uh, Natasha Denona Trio Chrome, but like you can build them up and they're gonna be fine. But this one, like one swatch, like the shine, I don't know. They're all good though. So just take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. And we're gonna get into three looks. I am gonna try not to be long-winded. I know this video is long enough. I'm wearing the Pat McGrath eyeshadow primer on the eyes. Starting with the Cosmos, and I'm taking the Lethal Cosmetics blender. So 
Switching to What's Up Beauty R104 brush, I'm gonna go into Carter Observatory. These do kick up a little bit of powder, so just make sure you tap it off so you don't have on too much shadow. I'm taking a Blend Bunnies B4 brush here, and I'm gonna go into Araki McKenzie, this one. Next, I'm going in the jewel box. I'm gonna try something different. I'm gonna use a brush. <laughs> I'm using the MSQ shader. I don't know if y'all can see it, but this one right here. Mmm. I'm gonna go back into the mat shortly. This shade looks so beautiful going over the purple. Really, really pretty shade. It. <laughs> this is Auckland Stardome. I just want that to be the, the little border between our purple and our shimmer. I think it looks perfect. So that's what I just used. So just putting it down the middle so there's a nice transition. It didn't look like, I didn't want it to look like half and half. Let's go in to, for the under eye, the Araki McKenzie again. That is that very vibrant, beautiful purple. And then Carter Observatory, which is what we used in the beginning. That gray blue. I have to say, I wish I had time to film like this without rushing. It is such a blessing. It's so therapeutic and it's so fun. When I do my morning looks, I like those too, but you know I'm on a time constraint always. So this is just, I mean, to take this amount of time to film is really rare for me. So this is definitely special. I feel special. Now we're gonna go into the inner corner. Wait. And I'm gonna go into Magellanic Clouds, which is this multi-chrome. Oh, I cannot wait to see how this whole look turns out. And there we have our first look with the Nomad New Zealand Stargazing Palette. Mm. I'm excited to put it all together. So I will be back in a second with my liner and my mascara and I'll let you know how I'm feeling so far. One hour later. I love this look. I've been walking around doing stuff. To finish this look, I use Victoria Beckham liner in black, Pat McGrath Dark Star Mascara. Do you love this look as much as I do? I actually feel like this is a different look. I love this, what do you call this? Like a peachy gold? with the little celestial magenta and purple. I love this. This would be so good, like with some lashes, make this a little deeper here. Mmm, yes, very good. Well, I told y'all this is gonna be a long one, but one look out of three, we have two to go. Let me know your thoughts on look number one and let's get to the next one. And just like that, I am going to work. We are doing look number two. I'm wearing my Hourglass at Night blush and Dior lip oil and mahogany. Oh my gosh, it's 7.07. I'm really playing games today, and that's okay. <laughs> Cause we're gonna do this look, cause I'm wearing eyeshadow regardless, right? All right, so I wanna do neutral today, and I'm trying to think cool neutral, warm neutral. I want to, okay, I think I'm gonna go into Queenstown Skyline. This is not going to like show up too much, but it's going to give the next shade something to blend into. Let's see what Tongariro Night Hike looks like too. I wanted to see which one I want to stay with. Okay, I think I'm going to do that because there's, believe it or not, mm -hmm, there's a little more pigment here, like contrast with my skin tone. August asthma is acting up, of course, and being outside in that cold weather yesterday. Let's go into Dark Sky Nation, which is this black. I'm gonna tap it. This brush is from Ig Show. It's a brand I get on Amazon, very affordable. And I like how it's blending up into that gray. Really nice black, actually. Just wanna make sure that this blends nicely. Lighten it up just a little bit as we get up to the brow bone. Going back into Dark Sky Nation. Deepen up this part. Yeah, 
All right, so now for the shimmers. All right, forget what I said about neutral. Let's do Southern Cross. August, what do you need? Did you brush your teeth? Go ahead, August. They can't hear you. Can you guys pray for me? <coughs> Are you going to say the prayer or you want them to do it on their own? Yeah, you stay at home. Yeah. And y'all probably, you probably get McDonald's. And you got to ride with him to take great grandma to get her glasses or something. Ah, uh, you can't stay alone. Mm -hmm. Going into the cosmos, that's the gray. Oh, because you gotta talk to him about this plan. I don't know. Like, there's a lot going on. I'm just taking the gray cosmos shade to merge Southern Cross with the black. So it's a little gradient there. For the lower lash line, we're gonna just go into the cosmos for the lower lash line. It's a matte gray. Tell Marky to finish his medicine, please. Oh my god, that cough. I hate when he has that cough. We'll probably be going to the uh, doctor later. And you see I used my fingers today for the shimmers. It came out beautifully. Um, I'm going to go into Aurora Australis for the inner corner. Wait, wait. I like this brush for the inner corner highlight. It's a Blends B3. I really like it for that. All right, here is the second look, and I will be back with my mascara and liner, and I'll let you know my thoughts. All right, friends, I am back with look number two. I used the Victoria Beckham liner in the shade Ash, which is a matte gray, and my Pat McGrath Dark Star mascara. Let me know your thoughts on this one. Yeah. As far as look number, as far as look number two goes, <laughs> I love it. I really do. I love the gray with the multi-chrome there and the black. I think it came together really nicely and I love the little cool tone transition that we had. So, so far we've done two different looks and I think for the last one, we'll see, cause it can always change, but I wanna use more of the like pinks and purples maybe, maybe incorporate this uh, blue here. We have quite a few options with this palette so Let's get into the last and final look. All right, y'all, happy Friday or whatever you're watching this. Would you believe, okay, so yesterday, I took August to the clinic, of course, because, so he got pregnant on. Okay, hair. And while I was there, I was like, I felt a cold. Like, I literally felt it coming on. Like, stuffy nose, everything. And I woke up this morning, I'm like, we're sick. But guess what, that's okay blessed you're gonna get through it we are going into the final look and i'm not gonna complain i'm not gonna complain i'm just gonna try to knock it out y'all i'm gonna start with southern lights which is this shade here in the transition using my egg show brush i got my iconic london playtime blush on in case you were wondering and my awestruck lipstick which is by maybelline maybelline vinyl ink and I'm also wearing my NARS primer because I can't find the Pat McGrath. Ooh, y'all. So let's talk about it. I'm sure we've seen the new collection by now. So let me know what y'all think. If it is the same as the sneak peek that I saw, the whole thing is a no. And guess what? I'm happy. And so is my wallet. I am thinking about getting the new Huda Beauty Cherry Blossom Color Corrector because I'm obsessed with anything cherry or pink and cherry. And then I'm thinking about getting, I'm thinking about getting the new Peach Pie Setting Powder. I wonder if peach is going to be the new pink. Like, you know, pink under eyes and stuff we're in. And now I wonder if it's going to be peach because, like, you got the whole peach fuzz thing and everything. Let me know, is peach gonna be the trend this year? We're gonna go into Auckland Stardome, which is this one here. That's a nice little pinky look today, a little deeper here. Just putting that on the outer corner and in the crease as well. So August is good, but that's was the bottom line. August is good, and he also wanted to thank y'all for um, his ratings. Why is this, I don't know his outfit rating. I gotta get him some more clothes cause he's really into this whole style. 
situation. Now, Karina Nebula and Southern Cross. I can't remember what I used yesterday. I think I used Southern Cross though. That's what my gut is telling me, but. I'm gonna just take a Singe Beauty brush into Auckland Star Dome and just Let's just put it here too. A little bit of a halo style. You know what would have really been cute was to take a different color and put it here. Or a different color and put it over here. Which I can still do. But I'm really liking the little pink vibe today. I'm going to stop saying vibe too y'all. Because I feel like now it's overused because everybody says it. Not that I started everybody saying it. But you know what I'm saying. I got to come up with a different word. What's another word y'all? Because I hate when words catch on and then they're overused. And then I feel like. Why am I saying that? <laughs> Karina Nebula. <gasps> yes, y'all. Oh my gosh. A lot of times, instead of the word vibe, I say situation. I say situation a lot. But I don't know if that's, that's a situation. I mean, yeah, but I already say that. I want something else. I need a new word. I love words. Now, this is, is spectacular. Couldn't even get that out. See, so do we. No, I like this. I was going to say, do we put, uh, I'm concerned because I was thinking, ooh, a little hint of that purple might be nice, but I'm kind of liking this monochromatic look. We got the pink. Yeah, let's just leave it. I'm going to go with my gut because we're not going to have palette guilt. I told you about that. For those who don't know, palette guilt is when you only use like two shades, one shade, three shades and you feel bad <laughs> you feel bad for not using like 20 shades you know we don't have to do all that i need all that i wanted the southern lights and karina no southern lights and auckland star dome for the under eye no nope, i'm feeling this it's just it's beautiful this blend is just really fantastic i'm into it oh, i really like this actually I like all three looks that I did while we're uh, thinking about them. Now the question is, do we go with the matte inner corner highlight, like Queenstown Skyline? Yeah, we are. Queenstown Skyline. This is the one, the little peachy, warmer transition shade. I mean, because why not? <laughs> that right there is what I'm talking about. So this is our third look. I love this. And see, I love the other two. But this is probably my favorite because it's just chill. It's a chill moment. People say moment too. I'll be back with my mascara and liner and uh, we're gonna close this one out. Back with the final look. <laughs> so to finish this off, I used Victoria Beckham liner in Bordeaux and I used my Pat McGrath Dark Star Mascara. None of that is a surprise. Yes, okay. Uh, this look. I think I love this look. Yeah, this is my favorite. Just so you know, the other two looks held up throughout the day. But sometimes as I go throughout the day, I don't like the looks anymore. <laughs> I don't know why I'm like that, but I am. The first look really encompassed the whole palette like this to me, right? The second look was good too, but I don't know. I think the sweatshirt that I had on really threw me off the, my, school sweatshirt with the red white and blue because my intention was to go neutral for that and then I did it so then I just was kind of thrown off throughout the day and then you go in the bathroom the lighting is like horrendous so I was like eh. but I did like that look because I edited it and I was like no nah, that looks good this one I like this I have this like hoodie on that says pure velvet whatever that means and I just think this is all gonna pull together. So I, I really like this. Let's just go and get into the final thought. If I was not sent this palette, I would have purchased this palette myself. It is gonna be $59 and I do have a code which is Frizz Face and that will take 10% off. I don't get any money from it, which is fine. I would have bought this. This is so well done, Nomad. And you continue to top yourself. And I don't know how y'all are doing it. Last year, I mean, I like Nomad back when Fire and Ice came out. That was the first Nomad palette that I purchased. And I did a whole four day video about going to Iceland and everything. I'll link that. It was like one destination and four looks. And I had a coat on. It was I was like all in the moment throughout 
my journey with nomad there are some color stories that i don't like in formulas but what i can say is i love that they take chances that they try different things and i really feel like they put their hands into the shades the the names everything like i said it's almost like a work of art it is and i'm gonna be ready it's i'm actually gonna be ready in one minute little timekeeper the they have this memoir of their trips and these palettes so i love that they're very careful with what they do with them the color story the vision and bought even down to the embossings so i would have bought this palette hands down performance beautiful nomad to me is known for their mattes but they're stepping up their shimmers i do think these multi chromes are better than the ones in the royal europe i don't know if they're technically the same or not but i think with the single swatch I could see they're both smooth, but the pigment, there's more pigment there, whereas the other ones were more sheer upon first swatch. So these were a little stronger, which I love. I love everything about it. And I love most of all that I got to learn about a new place I want to visit. I think if I go to New Zealand, I would not come back. So let me know if you're trying to go. I saw two different release dates, but I don't know if it's the 15th or the 16th, but when this palette goes on sale, I will definitely make a post and let me know if you plan on purchasing it or are you gonna admire from afar. If you have something in your collection that you feel like mimics this, uh, let me know. The only thing that I have that I think would be a great compliment and, and not a dupe, but a compliment would be the Sydney Grace and Temtalia palettes because it had that galactic starry theme. But that that's it. This is really unique. Congratulations on Mac Cosmetics on a beautiful palette, a job well done. And I do appreciate being connected with you and you you know trusting me to do some good looks with the palette so that's gonna be it for this video let me know your thoughts on it thank you so much for taking out some of your time and hanging out with me for another one today i hope this was therapy for you it always is for me and until i see you again make sure you are being gentle with yourself talk to yourself nice stay safe and i will see y'all really soon bye